Hello everybody, welcome back to 30 for 30. We are now on part eight. So it's a great job getting this far. And what, we're a quarter of the way through the program. I think we've covered a lot of ground. Hopefully you feel you've learned something. And I'm just looking in the chat now, people talking about how they've managed to do some applications themselves, get some stuff done. That's what I'd like to hear. So I hope you feel you're making progress. Right, as always, please let me know in the chat. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Paul says he's got a beer in his hand. Fantastic stuff. Got to make it fun. Let's kick off with a question as usual. And we've dealt with loops. We've dealt with loops, but we've learned one particular type of loop. What kind of loop is that? Can you go back a couple of streams? And we've learned a for next loop, of course. And hopefully you're familiar with the setup where we have dim counter as integer for counter equals one to 10. That's a classic setup that I'm using every day in my work. So definitely internalize that one. My question for you is what other looping techniques do we have available to us in Excel VBA. So maybe a more advanced question, but I can see we have members here in the chat. We've got Biana with us. We've got Lee with us. Uh, we've got Paul with us as well. Paul's been with us for a while. So what other looping techniques do we have in Excel VBA? Let me know in the chat if you're watching on replay. Have a little think about that before we get started. Let's get into the chat. Let's say hello to some people. Welcome, Rick from Iowa. Jorgen's here, the general uh, checked in early, so welcome, guys. Welcome, Adrian from Wales. Uh, welcome, Lee Staniland. Welcome, uh, Adrian. Uh, welcome. Who else have we got here? I'm trying to control this scrolling. Uh, welcome, Ahmed from Bahrain. Welcome, Ian from Edinburgh. Welcome, Frank. Welcome, Jasmine. Welcome, Paul. Gusa, Chris, Janard, and welcome, Lee Williams. Welcome, Biana. Welcome, Paul. Welcome, Pete B. Welcome, Henrik, Yulia, Freddie Yang from Canada. Welcome, Freddie. Good to see you. Uh, Elena Shutt is here as well. Welcome, DC is tuning in. Good to see you, DC. Daniel's with us. Welcome, Daniel from Holland, representing. Fantastic. And I think that's everybody we've got today. If I missed you, no, down the bottom, Pritam is here. And Kestutis, uh, just check, checking at the bottom, and Deepak. So welcome. I don't teach Python, Deepak. I'm a bit of a VBA specialist. So welcome, everybody. And then let me know in the chat. Yeah, do we have any ideas about other uh, looping techniques? I can't see any answers yet. So let me give you a bit of a clue. And let's think about the way Excel is structured. Have you ever thought about that? How does the computer actually compile Excel and actually put it together so it displays properly and it works? Well, Excel is organized into objects and collections, specifically collections of objects. Now, this word object we've dealt with before on the program. So anything you can see in Excel is an object. So the worksheet. Uh, is an object and you can see in this file I've got three worksheets uh, it's just a new file I've just opened up a cell uh, is an object the workbook uh, is an object and then if we have charts in a sheet they're all objects if we have buttons in a sheet they're all objects but the new piece of information we're kind of introducing today is this concept of of collections. Got some good ideas in the chat now. Keep putting those in about loops. This concept of collections. So if, we're going to, if we can understand this concept, we can harness it to get so much done because we can say to Excel, you know, that collection of objects. So, you know, all those worksheets you've got organized in a little collection in your memory. Rather than me repeating instruction, could you just do the same thing to all of them? And, you know, um, all of the all of the shapes we have on this worksheet, could you do something to all of them since they're all organized in your directory, in your collection in the same place? This is the idea in Excel. Objects are organized in, into, into collections. We can take advantage of that infrastructure to get lots and lots done. This particular type of loop is called and nobody's got it in the chat yet, but this type of loop is called for each, for each object in a collection. This is the basic piece of syntax we're going to experiment today. You are going to feel the power. We do have some good ideas in the chat, there, chat though. Yeah, welcome, Gary, and welcome, Alexander Callum. Gary says, while or, or when. 
Uh, Biana says do while. Yes, this is our third type of loop. So a do while or a do in two loop. We're going to come to that later in the program. So good contributions there. So we've got three types of loops. You know, this isn't important for today, but just have it in mind. Three types of loops. We've got our four next loop, which is what we've been, we've been doing so far. Dim counter is integer. Four counter equals one to ten. We've got our for each loop, which we're dealing with today. You're going to love it. So for each object in a collection, then we have our do until loop, which we're going to get to later uh, in the program. Oh, Bjarna did get it. OK, Lee, Lee says Bjarna did get it. I might have missed it. OK, good stuff in the chat. So let's get started with this. How can we kind of access this idea as always uh, at the bottom here? And then let's suppose we want to do something to all of the sheets in the file. And this is a typical thing that somebody might want to do. We don't want to have to go through all of the sheets. So I'm hitting control function and page up control function and page down on the Windows PC. We don't want to have to go through all of the sheets and then you know, have to click through them. We're trying to avoid all of that clicking. I, I am getting a notice saying the stream is weak. So just refresh the stream um, if it's not looking too good for you. We don't want to have to do that. So how do we do that? And what is the syntax? So let's get into the VBA editor. Uh, let's put a module in here. And how do we start? So option explicit to get started. One additional thing at this point, a few people have asked me to demonstrate how we get Excel to automatically add option explicit. How do we do that? How do we do that? I'm trying to remember myself. Maybe somebody can tell me in the chat, uh, but we go to tools, I believe in the Excel VBA editor. You can go to tools and then options. There's nice options here for setting up the VBA editor exactly how you want it. You can change uh, the font and the size of the font, things like that. Now, if you go ahead and hit require variable declaration, uh, that means that uh, Excel will put option explicit in when you create a new module. If you hit this now, I'm going to leave it unticked just because most people don't have their Excel set up like that. So it's good practice to keep typing in option explicit there. And David DC, typical DC is always on the money. He is giving us the syntax in the chat. Hello, Mamo, and welcome. Thanks, Rick. Rick says it's in tools there. So let's go say ahead and say, um, um, let's say do something do something, uh, do something to all sheets. So do something to all the worksheets in the file. Now, when we're working with a loop often, not always often, we need to declare a variable. A variable is just a place to store some information. It helps us manage, control the loop, when to start the loop, when to end the loop, things like that. In this case, we're going to have an object variable and it's going to be a worksheet. So dim Chris sheet as worksheet. So this is another variable type. So you'll remember what are our variable types. We've got things like integer, uh, long, string, Boolean as well. We'll get to that later in the program. We've also got our object variables. So things like worksheet, cell, those objects. We can always we can also use those as variables to get stuff done. Don't worry too much about this technical stuff. It doesn't really matter. We're going to keep it practical. Just follow along with the example. Then this is the magic bit, really. And DC has already put this in the chat, but this is the magic bit. We want to say to Excel for all the objects in this collection. So for all of the worksheets in your worksheets collection. So let's go ahead and it's going to be a for each loop. So let's say for each Chris sheet in. So that's our object there for each Chris sheet. And you can see we've used the, the name of the variable that in. And then we're going to say, I think it's worksheets is the name of collection, although we might be able to get away with sheets. I think it's worksheets. So this is how we open up a for each loop. What do we need to do when we open a loop? We need to close it straight away or we might forget to do it and that can cause problems. So this is our basic syntax. We've got the loop op the opening line for the loop, the closing line for the loop. And this, of course, is a for each loop for each object in a collection. We're doing worksheets. You could do sales. You could do any number of things. We'll do at least one more in this uh, stream. 
DC says this is a very useful lesson. Thanks, DC, but you have it hasn't happened yet. The, the, the lesson. Let's hope it's useful. Cheers, DC. You know I'm only kidding. And DC says I use this all the time in code. And Paul says yes, the good old Chris sheet. Absolutely. Why do I say Chris sheet? Well, uh, if you say Chris sheet or Chris workbook or Chris cell. You can guarantee, you can use your name, don't have to use my name. You can guarantee that Excel won't have reserved that particular piece of syntax, won't have reserved that word for its own use. If you say for, if you say dim sheet as worksheet or dim worksheet as worksheet, that could get problematic. Certain words like worksheet, row, column, cell, Excel reserves for its own use. So if you say Chris sheet, it's making things distinctive. So let's go ahead and just see if we can get this working. So I'm going to have the variable name. And this should just flash up. Well, what do you think it's going to do? If you watch on the replay, stop the stream and try to assess what this might do. So we're going to loop through all the sheets and then hopefully flash up the name of each sheet. Control S, save the file. I'm going to hit F5 on the Windows PC. You can just hit the play button at the top hit F5 and we can see sheet one. Now that makes sense because that is the name of the first sheet in the file. Then confusingly, the second sheet in the file is called sheet four. Not sure what happened there. And then sheet five is the third sheet in the file and then sheet two and then sheet three there. So it's going through the sheets in the order they're positioned in the file and just giving us, just giving us here a uh, a piece of information is giving us one of the properties of the object. Can you remember that properties word as well? One of the properties of the worksheet object is the name. We're just externalizing that property there. So let me know uh, in the chat. Are you following along? Yes, Paul is on the money. The name of each sheet, 43 viewers, 11 likes. Very happy with that. Can we beat the record yesterday? I think we've got to 47. Why not give it a quick share with your mates? And um, let's try to get a few more people onto this just while we're here. Uh, if you're enjoying this stuff and got lots of positive feedback, check out our membership options. We have a weekly live stream, which is called Members Monday. You get access to a weekly live stream with, with me. We go into much more depth and detail uh, than we do here. You also get access to a Facebook group and a content navigator to allow you to navigate the content of all the previous streams, which you'll get instant access to if you take out a channel membership to Members Monday. You can see people in the chat. Uh, people have a little membership sign next to their names. It's like a little S uh, in a circle. And they are some of our excellent channel members. We've got a really good little community here. So let me lay down another challenge here. Going back to the first sheet in the file. Suppose I want to list the names of all the sheets in the file. Whoa, that sounds difficult. So we've got five sheets in the file. I'd like those five sheet names listed here. So as usual, we're starting with one technique and just getting it working, just doing something simple and then integrating one of our other techniques. You're going to have to think which technique we're going to need. And then creating that synergy between techniques. It's the synergy between the techniques that really creates the magic. So what do you think? What do you think then? We've got some syntax we can work with here and just going to make a slight adjustment to this uh, syntax. So the name of the sheet is uh, sheet one. And you can, of course, change the name of the sheet if you want. And let's start in B3 here. OK, how about this? So I think I think this is a good starting point, as always with code. You know, we don't try to complete the task in one step. We take an intermediary step. I know this isn't going to work, but it's going to get us part of the way. We don't have to do all the work at once. Best to do a little bit of work, test it, a little bit more work, test it. That's the way to keep the stress levels down, keep your programming sessions long. Adrian on the money here. Adrian's talking about using range and offset. So that's good from Adrian. So let's give this a go. I'm going to hit the F8 key now on the Windows PC. You can go to debug and step into and just step through the code. You can see we've got our usual setup here, the VBA editor alongside uh, the worksheet so I can see both and see what's going on. 
Okay. So let's keep an eye on cell B3. We can see the sheet name of the first sheet in the file as the sheets are ordered has gone into B3 there. And then sheet four has gone in. So keep an eye on cell B3 up here. Sheet five hitting the F8 key. Sheet two and sheet three. So the specific text that appears will depend on how many sheets you've got in the file and the names of the sheets. I've got five sheets in my file. Let me just go back to the whole view. I've got five sheets and they're called sheet one, sheet four, sheet five, sheet two, sheet three. So that's why we were seeing that text as we did that. So we get in there. We're getting there with this task. But what do we need to do now? Adrian has suggested offset. Yet we need better control of position, don't we? Because we're just overwriting. We're overwriting the text in cell B3. We want to do better than that. We want to work down these cells. So the second sheet goes here, third sheet goes here, fourth sheet goes here, and the fifth sheet goes here. How are we going to do that, to be honest? Another one of our members, Bjarne, made his debut in Members Monday, already making some fantastic contributions to our community and another fantastic contribution here. So offset working with a variable, working with a counter variable. So let's say offset here, and I'm just going to put some kind of placeholders, some kind of silly numbers in here. And then we also need a variable and the variable is going to allow us to control position by working with offset. So what kind of variable do we want? Um, I'm going to say a different variable name just to show we don't have to always call it counter. I like using the name positioner, positioner because it's literally doing positioning and it's going to be an integer variable. So a whole number variable here that's going to do the job. And then let's pop the variable name in here. Positioner. And then let's just see what happens now. So again, I'm not expecting anything else to happen yet, but it's just going to get us a step closer here. So again, hit, hitting the F8 key and keep, keep your eye on cell B3. Keep your eye there on cell B3, hitting the F8 key. Okay, there we go. Let's change this to zero. Clear these cells again. And reset the code. Hit the stop button if you want to reset the code. Hitting the F8 key and we can see sheet one, sheet four, sheet five, sheet two and sheet three. So I'm just hitting the F8 key. That's going through the code line by line. Okay, so we get in there. So we've got to control this variable more effectively here. And we want to increase the value of the variable by one each time we go through the loop, that's going to have the effect of, okay, the first time we go through the loop will be here. The second time we go through the loop, increment up by one, that's going to get us to here. Once we start pairing the variable with offset, the third time we'll go here, fourth time and fifth time. So we'll have that effect of working down our little range of five cells here. So what's the syntax we need? Our basic VBA build, building blocks. There we go. Dave, DC's having a go at me in the chat. Control space to autofill variable names. Here we go. So one of our uh, building blocks here. So A equals A plus one. So can you apply that building block to get this task done? Yeah, DC, if you hit control space when you're typing variables, uh, Excel will autofill the name of the variable rather than having to do all of the typing as I was there. So positioner, A equals A plus one. Positioner equals positioner plus one here. There we go, Biana on the money, very good. Control S, save the file. So I'm gonna do this with the F8 key again. So what's the value of positioner? Because we haven't initialized, I would say initialized the variable, we haven't allocated a value to it, it's gonna have a value of zero the first time we go through. So sheet one's gone in there. Now we're going to increment the, the value up by one. We can see positioner is now one. I'm just hovering the cursor over the variable there. And then sheet four goes in. So positioner is working with offset here. The value of positioner goes up by one. It's working with offset again. There we go. Value goes up by one, working with offsets. And then finally in cell B7, 
we can see that was what we wanted to do. And just to prove this, I'm going to play it for you. So control shift down and the delete key. Uh, reset this and then F5 to play it. And we can see our sheet names appearing there. So what do you think, guys? Have you got this one working for you? So only a simple example, but these mechanisms that we're building are super powerful. We've got our second loop type here for each object in a collection. We've got position control here uh, using offset. We've got a variable that we're incrementing up. All of these techniques synergizing together to do super cool stuff. Yeah, DC in the chat is absolutely right. If we don't, ideally we would uh, initialize the variable properly by just saying at the top here, positioner equals zero. If you don't um, assign a value to the variable like that, um, an integer variable will assume a value of zero. A string variable, that is text, will assume a value of, of nothing, nothing as in speech marks. You can see what um, DC is talking about in the chat here. Daniel says, great to know. Thanks. Good stuff, Daniel. Sounds like you got it working. Paul's got it working. Pritam's got it working. Lee's got it working. Fantastic. Pete has got it working. Lee has got it working too. And Bjorn has given me the thumbs up. So I think Bjorn has got it working as well. Very good. So this is a typical um, object, a typical collection of objects that you might work with, worksheets in a file. What else might we work with? What about, um, it could be each cell in a range, but we're going to come to that later. Let's do something a little bit more fun. Let's put some shapes in here and you can put any shapes you like. I'm just going to go for some, what, sh what should I go for? I like these cloud shapes. So I'm going to put some cloud shapes in here and you can do whatever you like. Uh, hold down the control key and then make as many shapes as you like. Doesn't that look pretty? Let me know in the chat. Do you like that? Um, put some shapes in. You can put any shapes you like. So. Let's see if we can do the same thing here with shapes. So you might be like, whoa, I've got no idea how to do that. But we just go back to our building blocks. One of our building blocks is for each object in a collection. And remember, I said at the beginning, shapes in a sheet is one of the collections, one of Excel's collections. So the shape object um, in uh, in a collection. Let's see if we can harness that now. Again, just to list the names of the shapes. So we've probably got some, yeah, cloud one, cloud two, cloud three. So let's see if we can list the shapes here. And let's do this by, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to adapt this code. I'm going to adapt this. Uh, you can copy paste this down if you want. Um, I'm just going to adapt this code. Let's see if we can get this working. So let's say Dim Chris shape. I think it's shape. I think that's the object variable we want, but we'll see. Live coding, who knows what's going to happen. And then we need to change this, of course. And then we're going to say uh, this, this worksheet, no, active worksheet will be active worksheet dot shapes. So we're saying to Excel for all of the shapes on this worksheet, can you do something? Then got to make sure we change this to Chris shape, of course. So I'm being very deliberate about the syntax here. Any syntax errors, you know, even a single letter, it's not going to work. And you might think it's a disaster. It might feel like a failure, but it's actually just one spelling mistake. So try to be as precise as you can with the spellings there. So let's say Chris shape dot name here. Let's see if this is going to work. Just sense checking the code now. Do something to all shapes. There we go. Okay, control S, save the file. So I'm going to work through it with the F8 key. Active work, active worksheet dot shapes. Hmm, doesn't like that. Is it this worksheet? Hmm, let's see. Let's see, I don't, is, is it going to like that? Let's have a look. Okay, so let's try this. Uh, let's put the actual sheet reference in. Sheets, sheet one. Dot shapes, okay. Let's give this a go, hitting the F8 key. Okay, that seemed to work. So just 
it's weak in the syntax there. That's, you know, as I say to you all the time, you know, I don't memorize the syntax. Um, quite often I get it a bit wrong like that. You know, I, I, I've got a few options, but what would you do if you weren't able to kind of work through a few options like that? You could just go online. If you Google Excel VBA, um, all the shapes on a sheet, you'll be able to find some code that you could work with. So hitting the F8 key now, and then what's going to happen, let's keep our eye on B3, and we can see um, our shape names being listed there. So another cool collection that we can work with, all of the shapes. Okay, let's see if we can do something else cool with these shapes. So I'm going to quickly show you another property here. Uh, DC says active sheet. Yep, I think you're right there, DC. So is this going to work with active sheet? Let's have a look. Control, let's save the file. F5 key, yep. So the syntax should be active sheet as opposed to active worksheet. I still make mistakes. Try not to make a big deal about it. We, we just fix it. We keep going. It's all part of coding. DC is still talking about control space. I will integrate that into my practice DC. I promise. We've got 50 concurrent viewers. This is a record. This is a record for 30 for 30. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm loving delivering these sessions. And let's see if we can get it to 60 viewers, 16 likes as well. Fantastic stuff. Um, let's go ahead and just, just for a bit of fun now. Chris shape dot hop. Let's try this. Okay, so what's this dot hop property? Well, we can see it's a property because it's it connects to the object and it's after the dot. So that usually means we're talking about a property. I'm just going to go ahead, hit the F8 key here. Okay. Chris shape dot top. Okay, right. Quickly, let's try this. If this doesn't work, I'm going to abort this. I'm going to come back to it. Uh, later in the stream. Um, oh, I'm not sure about this. Let's let's try this. Hit the F8 key here. Okay. Address maybe. Let's have. Let's try this. Okay. Hit the F8 key here. Okay. We're going to come back to that later. We're going to come back to that later. There's a nice example where we can move shapes around. I'm going to have to go and revise my syntax a bit. And to be honest, we're running out of time anyway, but we're going to come back to that later. And I've lost my code. I've lost my code. So I'll have to close the file, open the file here to get it working. So hopefully you've still got your code in the file there. Good stuff. So let me know any further questions in the chat. We'll come back to that example later. Don't worry about it. Hopefully you've got your clouds and you've got something pretty in the worksheet. But more importantly, you've felt the power of objects and collections. So Excel consists of objects. Uh, we're, we're dealing with shapes here. Uh, could be worksheets, could be open workbooks. And we can say to Excel for all of these objects in those collections that you organize them into, can we do something to all of them? And in this case, we've just been listing names, things like that. But you might be doing something much more complicated. You might, might be moving data to each of those uh, sheets. You might be taking each of those sheets and copying it to a separate file, like any number of things you could be doing using this technique. Jasmine says they look beautiful. Can you make them? Can you make them pink? Uh, you can make them any color, of course. Good, good. Jorgen says he's, he's got his mojo working. Excellent. Good. To see, plenty of people work. Um, plenty of people got this working today. PNR eight UK says, "Are we doing press ups today?" I'll do press ups when we get to sixty concurrent viewers. So we did have a record today. We did have a record because we hit fifty. But we can do better now, guys. We almost hit 50 yesterday. So for 60 concurrent viewers, I will get the press ups out again. Any other questions in the chat? Alexander's absolutely right. This is a great comment. Alexander says it's good to make mistakes as long as we understand how we can solve it. And don't worry, the, the example I did at the end there, we'll sort that out uh, later in the course. Uh, Faridor, hello, Faridor. Good to see you. Uh, Saints fan seven, fantastic course so far. Only just catching up with a live one. Great to have you uh, in the live Saints fan. So see you tomorrow, hopefully. And 
Rick says, hope I can make it daily. Good. Not sure while working from home. Thank you. Very informative. Useful. Cheers, Rick. Nice to have you with us today. Uh, if you can't make it daily, if you can't make it live, guys, obviously, I'd love to see you in the live. If you can't make it live, you can always catch up on YouTube. I'm going to leave these videos up on YouTube. I see no reason to take them down. So they're always there for your reference. Yeah, Justin says pull ups at 60. Yeah, for 60 concurrent viewers, I'm very happy to break out the pull ups. So, guys, that's all. That's all for today. Make sure you do your practice, do your experimentation, do your pray, play, play, take this example, work with it. That's right. You're really going to do your learning. I'm loving delivering this course. Hopefully it's delivering some value for you. We're just scratching the surface, guys. Really, we're just getting into the basics now. As we go further and further, you're really going to start feeling the power of Excel VBA. I'll see you tomorrow right here four o'clock UK time. Take care.